Hey y'all, so I'm back with another video. This one's gonna be about kibble and why I took my dog off of this. He now eats fresh food. So for one, if your dog eats kibble, you definitely wanna watch this video. Kibble is extremely processed regardless of whatever pictures or ingredients that they put on the bags of the kibble. Feeding your dog is not about spoiling him or her or about being fancy. It's about recognizing that no natural digestive system can tolerate a highly processed food. Over 80% of dogs will get some type of dental disease in their lifetime, roughly the same amount of those who eat dry food. We as owners have come to just rely on the food labels and or what smells or appears good. And that actually has never been a good guide for us. A whole bunch of ingredient label tricks allow companies to mislead pet owners, consumers. Numerous studies have found that pet foods to contain certain ingredients that are not listed on their ingredients list or on their like label or missing ingredients that they claim to be using. Pet food production in the US has been held to a very low quality and um, low safety standards, which is hidden by those marketing and labeling regulations. When you see a, a, a cute bag of kibble that says, let's say label, uh, that's labeled with like roast chicken and you see like the brown cute pellets, the reality instead could be diseased animal chicken um, mixed with high starchy fillers that were processed at temperatures known to produce carcinogens. And all of this can be still labeled as natural, organic, etc. Did you know that diseased meats are allowed in dog food if processed at high temperatures? That's crazy. A product only needs 3% of a meat or protein to be labeled as being included with it or being made with it. So a product can have, can say made with chicken and only 3% of the kibble is actually chicken. <laughs> That's freaking crazy. Just because a bag says natural does not mean that it's safe or good for your dog. A bag of kibble. Pet food isn't as safe as it claims to be, if at all. And, and kibble has very low animal protein. Now let's talk about moisture. Animals, like say dogs and cats, they're originally, they're originally like meant to hunt, hunt their prey. Now prey, wild prey, they contain about 65 to 70% of moisture. When you put your dog on like a raw, a, a raw diet or a canned food diet, fresh food. Most raw or fresh food moisture stays within that, that range. While dry kibble only contains six to 10% moisture. Red flag. Dogs need moisture in order to digest. So if your dog is eating kibble, well, how are they getting the moisture? Where is it coming from? A dog on kibble, it's coming, it's being transported from their cells of the body into the digestive tract. And so this chronic drain of fluid coming from the body stresses out the organs and can cause and can affect the kidneys. And kidneys need moisture to properly function. And so pets who consume like dry diets at like kibble pretty much remain in a state of like low dehydration. And this can over time lead to a deficiency. Pets with this deficiency, they may have like a dry coat, dry cracked nose, dry foot pad, flaky skin, dark pink or like red tongue. And they may like pant excessively. So the body is constantly consuming its own fluids, which can cause something called a uh, sludge. And sludge can usually appear as, I'm gonna say this word wrong, um, lipomas, L-I-P-O-M-A-S. And that is like large fatty deposits under the skin. Okay, let's just talk about kibble and how it's like made. So kibble is processed at high heat and it's cooked about four or five times high temperatures these poultry mills that you see these poultry mills are actually made by grinding the entire <coughs> bird including the feces the feathers everything kibble is not supposed to be contaminated with fecal bacteria so the ground poultry that they feed our dog aka zoo, dead zoo animals roadkill they're cooked at high heat to kill the bacteria so after they gather all of these dead animals with like diseases and whatever else we don't even know what's in there they make this like stew and they dehydrate it at like very very high temperatures so they will then ship this dehydrated stew to the manufacturers and they will add in like other ingredients then they will cook it again to like make this dough this dough is then cooked at high temperatures and then pushed through an extruder and cut into kibble sized pieces then they dry it again in order to give it that shelf life so all of those essential fatty acids amino acids and vitamins have been destroyed throughout that whole entire process of creating 
making kibble. Manufacturers would then like pretty much protect or secure the kibble with um, like synthetic vitamins. Problem is the pet food industry. You have owners buying what they think is the best option for their dog, this kibble. And in reality, the owners are feeding their dogs rendered zoo meat, diseased meat, roadkill, rotting meat that just has been cooked at high temperatures. You know, chemicals are then added into the meat to make it nutritionally um, adequate. Pet food companies put these nice pictures of fish, chicken, beef on these labels and bags, wanting us to believe that this food is the same food we put in our bellies. We gotta give our pets that unconditional love that they deserve. The pet food, industry and the market just has a lot of like misleading advertising and there's always commotion about well what should we feed our pet just make sure you do your research ask questions and just try your best to avoid kibble based diets in order for kibble to stick together they got to use glue and that glue is a carbohydrate of some sort so kibble will always be high in carbohydrates usually between 40 to 60 percent of that food and the pet food companies are not required to let us know how much carbohydrates are actually in the pet are in the are in their food carbs are way less expensive than uh protein so pet food industries love to use a lot of carbs in their food let me see peas potatoes lentils sweet potatoes i know that there's more missing are are all carbohydrates chickpeas a lot of carbohydrates can lead to um chronic inflammatory issues like diabetes um arthritis uh, I'm missing some. So when a pet eats a meal that's high in carbohydrates, they release insulin. A high carb diet stresses the pancreas due to constant stimulation to produce insulin. And here is the, this is actually what I, I what I thought too. I was told that kibble diets help their, help dogs with um, their teeth. It's healthier for their teeth. Like don't give your dog, I was told don't give your dog what food is not that good for them, but dry food is better, especially with, with their teeth. And that is a lie. Kibble contributes to dental disease. Kibble does nothing to prevent tartar from building on your dog, on your pet's teeth. And what's funny is his first vet actually tried to put Roman on that Hills, that dog Hills, Hills kibble, Science Hills something, and he actually didn't like it, so I never put him on it. And here in my notes, I have that Hills dog food, they have like this tartar diet that they said works due to the shape of the kibble and their size but um in the the special like fiber matrix technology but actually they have ingredients with like brewer's rice um chicken byproduct meal pork fat whole grain corn cellulose and just all chemicals and most pets just swallow kibble they don't even they don't they don't even chew it up so then you may ask well how does it contributes to um, dental diseases. Well, it contains sugar. Camera just turned off, but um, as I was saying, the kibble contains sugar because uh, carbohydrates break down sugar. And as you know, sugar increases plaque. And so the moral of the story is pets with raw food diets or like fresh food diets with supplements have significantly less, less tartar. I changed my dog's diet in February after I found out what he had. I was looking at all my holistic options since I felt as though the veterinarian wasn't really helping me much, but keeping me in like a cycle that where I was getting nowhere or actually treating him. So um, I'm happy that I now he had, he's now on this fresh food diet. He's healthier in that way. Um, his skin is less uh, dry, and um, I know that he will, well, hopefully it will prevent, this food will prevent him from running into issues that he could have had ran into or run into in a, uh, down the line with kibble. Now, I put my dog on a fresh food diet because I wanted to make sure that I was giving him the best life he could have with me in all aspects food, well-being, whatever. Um, so this disease has opened my eyes up to different ways of uh, treating him holistically and um, how I gotta find my answers on my own and not through like the system. Now the reason why I put my dog on a fresh food diet and off the kibble 
is because of everything I just learned today. But what really triggered me was um, after him being diagnosed with alopecia X, I wanted to make sure that he had the best life, the best um, just treatment in all aspects. How like how can I make his life better? And after just finding out alarming information about kibble, I did research, found a company called Farmer's Dog, who he loves their food. Um, and I also make his own food sometimes, uh, but I wanna just make sure that he has the best life. I wanna just make sure that he has the best life, no matter like the cost. So. If you get a dog, if you you know, if you get a dog or if you have a dog, you want to make sure that it's like your baby, like he's my son. I would, I want him just to just have a good lifestyle, a good and healthy lifestyle. Whatever is best for him, I figure out and I get it done. Um, so yeah, more videos to come soon, updates on Roman. I'll make a video on his food, his meals, what I feed him, how I prepare them, the supplements that I give him to help him on a daily basis. Um, and yeah, just more to come. Thanks for watching. Peace.